Hello everyone and welcome to the second live Linden scripting language tutorial with me John Parker and me Joe Kelling and today we are actually going for what was it LL message linked? Yes, yeah. link messages. Um so as John has described it, it's basically um scripts talking to other scripts within other yeah. objects. And that can also be throughout other prims in that object as well. And that is what we're gonna look at today. So uh, John, if you wanna kick it all off. Okay, well first of all I just want to give you a little reason as to why you'd want to use this. Um, it's mainly used so that, well, number one, you can have scripts talking to other scripts, so if you want to split your um, scripted system up into little separate scripts and have them distributed across different primers, maybe if you've got like sounds you want to play and the sounds won't play because um, you've got other sounds playing and other primers because there's limitations with that, then what you can do is you can t have like one main script and that script will be communicated by with other scripts using this message link system. So I'm going to demonstrate that today. So here as you can see we've got a three prim object, that's three okay. cubes stuck together. Yep. And um, the one on the left is the root, the two are child, child, child prims. Now, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to create a new script without using edit linked, and that's going to put the script in the root prim. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to call this script, um, I don't know, controller. That will be the controller script, the main script as I like to call it. And in here, I'm just going to go ahead and remove this bit. We don't need any of that. By the way, I was wrong, Jack. I found out a couple of days, well, about a week ago, that um, you don't actually need the state entry event really? in a script. Apparently not. Apparently it will still let you compile that, so I was wrong about that. So there we go. If it moans, of course, then put it in, but I've, I've not had any moaning recently when doing it. So Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the link message event. So I'm going to go ahead and type link message. And then there's uh, four parameters. The first one's called the sender num. The second one is the a num <laughs> or number. The next one is a message, and the last one is an ID. Uh, one second. That's yeah. really simple enough. Oops, and of course, for those who have forgotten, probably uh, integer, basically a number, and string, basically just text. And obviously, the key is the, the key specific is the string ID. Well, it's a string specific to like avatars and objects, and their ID in the database on the Indian Lab servers. Yeah. Okay, so um, the parameters. <laughs> I never use sender num, but I don't. I, I I do think it's the prim that sent the message, or the script. The, the prim that the script is in that sent the message. Right. Now, if I just type um, the link message event in um, the wiki, it does say about uh, sender num. That, yeah, anyway, I'm right. The link number of the prim that contained the script. That called LL message linked, which is a function we're going to be looking at at sending the message. So yeah, that's useful if you want to find out which prim sent the message. Although normally you don't need to do that, but I'll tell you why. Now, these three parameters are specific, right, mm -hmm. to you, the scripter, right? They do not need to be set at all if you don't want to. Okay. They can be left at their default values, which I think is zero blank string blank or null key, as they like to put sometimes. Um, but why would you want to do that? That's pointless. The first one is a number. So you can put whatever number you like, I normally leave it at zero, but you can move it as anyone. And what you can do is you can actually group your messages using this number. So, you know, you could have like um, messages that go to the root prim, you could have maybe the number of zero or one. Messages that go to a certain service in your scripts, you could have like another number like two, and the next one three, the next one four, or you can have random numbers like 50, 1 million, if you really want to. It's up to you what you put as a number. Same with the message. If you want to send a certain string message, uh, sorry, yeah, a string, then you can put whatever you like there. It doesn't matter. And ID, again, if you've got like a, a message that you're sending like, um, I don't know, detect avatar or is avatar in region as an Azure message, you might want to put the key, the ID as the key of that avatar you're checking for. You don't have to. You can put it in the, in the message altogether. You can put the whole lot in the message, have the number zero, have the key ID as no key. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. These three parameters do not need to be specific. It's up to you. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. In the controller script, right, mm -hmm. we're going to have one of these cubes or a, or a script in one of these child prims tell the controller script to say a message, right? Okay. So in here, I'm going to have if message, um, no, better idea, sorry, if num is uh, one, so if the number that they provided is number one, we haven't got a message yet, then what we're going to do is going to go say, oops, 
whatever's in the message uh, parameter. Okay. Okay. So if that parameter is one, then say whatever's in that parameter. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Saved. And now I'm going to go edit linked. Choose the next. One. Actually, I'm going to choose the last prim on the end. Add a new script. Call this um, say message. And in here, when they touch this particular prim, I'm going to go ll message linked. Now, message linked function is very easy to understand. The first parameter is the link number you want to send the message to. Now, this can also be um, the certain constants like uh, link set, link this, link uh, all others, link all children. You know what we covered with the set link primitive params. Yep, I remember. I want to send it to the root, so I think I can put link root. Yes, I can. No, I'm a bit lazy. Sometimes I like to put just link set, so it just sends it across the whole lot, and whichever script has the link message event will pick it up. But that's when I use the num and the message parameters to like filter out which scripts pick the message up. Because I'm lazy like that, I like to do it all through the script rather than using the link number. But for this demonstration, I'll be the proper person. I know the script's in the root. I'll put it to the link root. So it'll only send to this prim here. Now, the next three parameters are the ones that we saw in the link message event. So you've got the num, the string, and the key. Okay, now we remember I said if the num is one, it will say whatever's in the message. So we'll put a message here. We'll say, hello from uh, the last prim. Okay, simple enough. Remember, we don't need to take entry here, so I can go ahead and get rid of that and save. Okie dokie. Now, when I click this prim, remember this prim does not have an LLC call in it. If I click it, we should see that this prim over here, or as the whole object is, uh, will say the message. I click, and there we go. Hello from the last prim. As you can see, the particles are going around this prim because that's the root prim and that's where the script is. So that's the script assigning the message. When I click this prim, that prim says it. Brilliant. Right? So it's very basically talking to that. Now, what is this useful for? Well, as I said, you can create an entire API. Now, an API is an application programming interface with scripts. So basically, you have loads of different scripts. They all do different jobs. You can spread them across an object. Our exterior and our console uses these, by the way, if you're wondering. And um, they just send messages to each other and communicate for local messages. Now, remember... Does, what, sorry, does, does the Stargate DHT user... Did you put... Uh, no, no. The, if, if you want to send a message to another object, you do need to use listeners for that. Right. So LLC, whisper, shout, and the yeah. listen event. Okay. okay. So this is purely for local communication between prims and slash scripts. It's, it's really to communicate with other scripts. Now, as I said, I just demonstrated that a prim in this, so a script in this prim could communicate with a script in this prim. But can that also be done with the same prim? Yes, it can. So if I, I'm in the root prim at the moment, as we can see, I can make another script in this prim going, uh, I don't know, uh, spin, right? And in here, I can have another listen, a link message uh, event. Now I'm going to just shorten the names of these parameters because, again, I'm lazy. And I'm going to go, okay, so if the number is one, um, so basically we're going to pick up, this, this script will pick up the same message that this prim sends out. So both scripts will now pick the same message up. Okay. We're going to go LL target Omega 0010 1.0 And this function will spin the cube, or I don't know whether it will spin the whole lot because it's in the root prim. It might do. But it will spin one of them <laughs> whenever we send a message out. So we send I don't think message. we've covered that one before, have we? Target Omega. We might have to cover that in a separate video. Yeah, but fair just, enough. Just Watch what happens. <laughs> so I'll click it. Oh, and there we go. It starts to spin as soon as you send the message. One thing about L Target Amiga is it won't stop until you stop it. So I'll just uh, put a sleep in there and then clear the values out. Otherwise, we'll be spinning forever, won't we? <laughs> so after one second, it will stop the spin. So, whoop, put it, click. <laughs> oh, it's that failing. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Got it. So it should stop now. There we go. So here we go. So you click it once, it spins for a second, and then stops. But as you can see, we just basically got both scripts to pick that same message up. 
and that was because you sent it to the root prim, and the root prim had both scripts in, and both scripts were checking for link messages, so both scripts picked that up. Okay. Now, as I said, that number value, or the, or the message value, doesn't really matter which one, in this case our number value, can be used to filter messages out. So if I wanted to, I could set num to be 2 there, right? And now, if I click this, only the message occurs, the spin doesn't happen. Okay. I could then technically have another um, message linked call after a second, which has num set to 2. Now remember, in this particular case, the spin script, the spin script, <laughs> the spin script does not use a message, so we can leave it as blank. Okay, so go ahead and save that. A link route basically just kind of makes the like, the bridge connection between the two. It just sends a message to the root prim. Right. It won't send it to any other prim. So it doesn't matter what, what it doesn't matter if another script in there in in this prim, for example, um, had a link message event. It wouldn't pick it up. It would only only send it to the root prim. So now right. if I click it, you'll see it should send the message. Wait a second. Spin. Wait a second and stop. In that order. Click. Send message. Spin. Stop. There we go. In that order. So that was basically me just showing you. you can send multiple messages in the same prim, and you can also um, separate the messages out using the num or the message or even the ID. As I said, you can check the ID parameter if you're sending it like an avatar's ID or, or an object's key. So yes, you can do anything you want with that. Guys, if you want any more information on this, go to the wiki at wiki.secondlife.com slash wiki slash link underscore message, or just type link me underscore message in Google, or just type link message in Google, I'm sure Second Life's wiki will pop up. Um, I know documentation can be quite hard to understand sometimes, because they, they do like to use quite big, crazy words with their um, wording, but if you need any help, contact us. We're here to help you now. Or at least I am. I'm sure Jack is as well. Uh, yeah. The, the seller sell stuff is more your game than mine. I am the learner. Yeah, yeah. You are the teacher. Professor. <laughs> okay, so guys, that is pretty much it. It's a very basic system. Mess around with it. Send messages to other prims. And send messages to the scripts as well. As I said, you can send it. Um, I could technically make this route, this controller script send that message to the spin script if I wanted to. Just by using link underscore this. But as I said, you can, if you really want to be lazy, just use link underscore set. It will send it to all the prims. As long as you filter your messages out properly, you won't have any collisions. Um, but as to, So yeah, I could just go ahead and move this spin for... So I'll go ahead and save that. And then in this controller script, I could literally make it just after saying the message. Then send that message to link underscore this. Huh, this. Mm -hmm. This again. Uh. Now when I click it, there you go, it does do it straight away because of course that other script in the root prim sent the message to another script in the root prim, which is the spin one. So two scripts communicating there, another script over in this prim communicating with those scripts. Message linked is very powerful. So guys, hope you enjoyed. And yes, that is what our exterior and console does. And yes, it is what NLS, H2O, it is what everyone uses. Unless, of course, you want to use listeners everywhere. But apparently, listeners are quite resource intensive. So, you know, it's everything. Even Stargates, I'm sure, use a link message somewhere along the line. So, yeah. Wonderful. OK, thank you very much for that, John. Um, so that is the end of our LSL video. Now. For all of you watching this video on the Saturday it gets released, unfortunately, we you will not have the review for Doctor Who on that Saturday night as I myself won't be available. So obviously, you'll be, you'll be getting the review next. Well, um, on Sunday, the day after this video gets released. So until next time, folks. See you soon. Take care and bye bye for now. Bye bye, guys. That is all we have for today, folks. Join us again next week on another Saturday Geeks video to find out what adventure we embark on next. Thank you for watching. Feel free to like and comment on the video below. Remember to subscribe so you can keep up to date with our latest videos. Till next time. Take care, stay safe, and remember, let, let your, your geeky, geeky side out. out. Toodle pip. Toodle pip.